Hey, it's Ruben in the shop. Today, we're talking Abe Lincoln, this little piece of paper, and what it says about the man as a politician. Let's dive in. Here we go. Here's the piece. This is a ticket. Um, we'll read it. Admit the bearer on board the steamboat provided to receive members of Congress. This is pretty interesting because um, these two slogans, the top one, I don't know where it's from. Men may change, principles never. But I did find Justice to Harry of the West on a uh, Henry Clay presidential poster that, uh, and Henry Clay was a Whig, W-H-I-G. So there were two parties at this time, two main parties in America, the Whig Party and the Democratic Party. Um, I believe this ticket is from Illinois because this giant collection of paper, this is only the beginning of it, is all about 90% from Chicago and Illinois. So it makes sense that this is part of that. Um, so most notably on this, at this time in Illinois, uh, Abraham Lincoln is part of the Whig Party. He has a seat in the House of Representatives for the state of Illinois. He's just recently been re-elected to that seat. At the time, they have a big budget problem in Illinois, and the solution from the Democrats is to uh, no longer accept the state currency and only accept gold and silver, thus putting um, or leaving the poor out to out in the cold because they didn't have gold and silver. They just had the paper currency. So Lincoln at this time is upset and he has a buddy at the uh, local newspaper. Oh, what is it called? Uh, ooh, Sudokwa or has an interesting name. I'll put it up here. Um, has a buddy. He has him publish this op-ed. It's a, a letter from a farmer's wife by the name of Rebecca. So this is how uh, Lincoln is writing. He's writing with a pseudonym as Rebecca, the farmer's wife, and just laying in on one of the Democrats, James Shields, uh, talking about him being a womanizer, talking about uh, him being a, a failed politician of the people. And Shields gets pissed when he finds out. And he contacts the publisher of the newspaper and says, I demand to know who wrote this. And Lincoln had already set this up, talked to the publisher, and he says, hey, James is going to call and he's going to be pissed. You tell him I wrote that letter. And sure enough, uh, the publisher tells James Shields, yeah, it was Lincoln. And Shields hits up Lincoln. He's like, bro, come on. What are you doing? You can't, like, this is slander. Um, I demand you redact that letter. And Lincoln's like, no, I'm not doing shit. And so uh, Shields is like, we're going to duel. We're going to duel. And Lincoln's like, all right, man. Let's go down to Missouri because we can't deal in Illinois and we'll get this thing done. And since you challenged me, I picked the weapon and I picked the uh, biggest, baddest, um, ooh, what is it called? Broadsword we got. So instead of using pistols, as you might suspect in a duel, Lincoln and Shields are going to go at it with broadswords. And to make things even more complicated, Lincoln creates this rule where they put a plank of wood on the ground. And so neither of them is allowed to cross the plank of wood. So Lincoln is trusting in the fact that he's a big monster man and he's going to have the reach on this guy. And then he wants to put uh, Shields in a position where he can't duel him. Uh, later, Lincoln would say that uh, Shields was a dead eye. And if they went pistols, uh, Shields would have killed him. So uh, they show up in Missouri and bust out these giant swords. Lincoln standing there, what is Lincoln, like six foot four? I believe James Shields was like five foot, between five foot nine and five foot four, I think I read. So not nearly as uh, big as Lincoln. And Lincoln's young too at this time. And so Lincoln starts swinging the sword over his head, like helicopter style. And there's a tree above him and he's just mowing down big branches with his broadsword, kind of showing uh, Shields like, dude, don't do this. You don't have any chance. And if you look at all the depictions of this, they show, uh, they're all um, artist renderings. They show, like, uh, Shields' friends, like, holding them back, like, classic, let me at him, but hold me back. 
like, hold me back. And so, long story short, they don't go through with the duel. They, uh, they have a truce. And, um, yeah, I think Lincoln, Lincoln goes on to uh, become president, obviously. And during the Civil War, um, Shields is injured uh, severely. And I think, like, on his deathbed, uh, Lincoln promoted him to like a brigadier general or something like that. So I guess uh, they buried the hatchet. But what's interesting about this ticket and that whole story is that date. September 2nd, 1842. That happens to be the date that the Rebecca letter was um, published in the newspaper. So at this point, I'm... This is all speculation, but it, it works. It fits. I'm thinking that Lincoln knew they were having this big wig party. And he's like, oh, I'm going to put James Shields on blast today of all days. Because we're going to be able to go and be talking about it at the party. And everyone's going to be like, man, you see what Lincoln did to Shields in the uh, the old journal? Tore him, tore him apart. So is that true? I don't know. Was Lincoln even at this event? I cannot prove that at all. Um, and my research is all of uh, like two hours on Google. But I love the story. I love the story I just told you. And I'm sticking to it. So there you have it. That's the story. Um, if you have any information on this ticket, Abraham Lincoln, the Wake Party, this event, uh, go ahead and throw it in the comments. Um, my name's Ruben. I'm having a good day. Hoping you're having a good day. Let's talk again soon.